Things are looking up for Elite Dangerous. Just a week into the Second Thargoid War, an escalation in the conflict which has resulted in two new Thargoid encounters and an expansion of the interactions which Thargoids will make in the greater universe. Gone are the days where each Thargoid system invasion was manually placed and managed, where the Thargoids harassed the edges of human space, occasionally vandalizing stations before departing. Now they are here to stay, burn the house down, and piss caustic over all the ashes. I love this update, and consider it a good step forward in the game's design, and in the attitude with which Elite Dangerous is developed. The Thargoids are now a present threat, with the ability to overrun and destroy every human system in the galaxy, at least in theory. While I doubt that Frontier will allow the aliens to win outright, I do think that they have deliberately stacked the deck against the player base as a way to build tension. It's a great design decision, since just holding the ground currently defended is looking like it will be a real challenge. At the time of writing, not all the Maelstroms have arrived yet, which means that several more fronts are going to open up around the bubble, further dividing the resources available to fight them and inhibiting the capacity of different systems to produce key resources essential to the fight. Time will tell how the loss of a critical economic hub like Shinrarda Dejra will affect the economics of surrounding systems, and how the player base will deal with these changes. The Thargoids themselves feel different, with a more aggressive posture in invasion systems and new abilities. The most significant changes are the willingness to render stations and surface ports inoperable, and the ability to interdict ships in supercruise. Flying through a system under invasion or occupation is treacherous, as players can now be ripped out of transit by a swarm of scouts or a full-sized interceptor. Unarmored and weakly shielded ships better be fast, because interceptors come out guns blazing and swarms raging, making evac missions riskier and all encounters deadlier. It's now possible to lose a ship full of refugees without good planning and a well-thought-out ship build. Stations destroyed by the Thargoids are not reduced to a cloud of debris, as I had hoped, but they are abandoned, inoperable, cold, and dark, with no ability for players to request landing or even enter the docking bay. There's nothing to keep you company but the sounds of creaking dead superstructure and a faint green cloud to mark what once was. Moving the battles for system control from ambiguous, somewhat arbitrary points in open space to key infrastructure at stations and surface bases is an excellent move because it provides for a physical, visual anchor that keeps previously drifted fights well confined. Defending stations from direct attack also focuses the Thargoids, who will surround and fire on the station without defensive ships to help draw their fire. It also happens to give vessels like the Type 10 Defender a functional purpose defending station entrances and outpost landing pads, where swarms of scouts tend to congregate. While it's not a practical ship for killing interceptors, turrets on the Type 10 can effectively and effortlessly screen scout swarms that would otherwise overwhelm AX ships fitted with interceptor-focused weapons. This all has a direct cost to game performance, though. Less powerful computer systems will notice a drop in frames, I experienced a nasty stuttering issue during my play sessions, it was especially noticeable on VR, and pushed the game to near its practical limit on my PC. Though, in all my sessions, there were an exceptional number of player-controlled ships in instance, participating in the fight, far more than typical conditions would allow. Surface ports and settlements are not spared the advance, with the possibility for spectacular aerial battles during the fight as cities burn below. Settlements in particular are interesting, as the current simulation renders them abandoned but not destroyed, meaning that if you have a power regulator, it's still possible to activate them, scavenge data from computers, and engineering materials from the various supply closets scattered about. Of course, you have to be quick to land and dismiss your ship, since a Thargoid interceptor will drop out to investigate shortly after you arrive, and then loiter overhead, almost indefinitely. It knows you're there somewhere, and will attack if it becomes aware of your presence, though it takes attacking it with your SRV or recalling your ship to set things off. The atmosphere scavenging an abandoned settlement while a basilisk circles overhead, the drone of its engines filling the sky between its lonely, angry cries, 
is the perfect place for an ambush, should Thargoids ever deign to exit their ships and hunt you through the corridors of a ghost town. There are a lot of opportunities here, should Frontier get around to them. I suspect the update we're slated to receive next year will have something to do with it, though cautious optimism is, as always, advised here. Cautious or not, there are additional gameplay mechanics we know are coming, hard-baked into the lore surrounding this part of the war. We know at some point there will be a change that allows us to explore the Maelstrom Clouds, strongly implied to be the command ships which control this fight. Since Guardian weapons are now vulnerable to remote disruption, and human AX alternatives are woefully outclassed by the newer, stronger interceptors, there is a strong possibility that we will get new human weapons with a higher effectiveness, or some way to insulate our Guardian technology from the disabling effects. Thankfully, these disabling effects are, for now, restricted only to Maelstrom systems as a passive effect and the new Orthus variant, though its particular version is very localized and only affects the instance that ships are active in. Having it be on a Thargoid interceptor at all has some disturbing implications for this weapon's potential on other Thargoid ships in the future, and provides a logical path of escalation as the war continues. As echoed in previous videos, the four experimental hardpoint restrictions need to be lifted. The game lore indicates that this is some kind of safety regulation, but in gameplay terms it feels like an arbitrary damage cap. Large ships and several medium ones have been largely gimped by this mechanic, since they all have more than four available hardpoints to fill. In an all-out war, it would make sense to send ships in with as much of the most effective equipment as they can carry. The netcode issues with ship-launched fighters are still in desperate need of attention. These craft are useful in a fight, but are ignored because they still cause severe networking problems when used alongside other player-controlled ships. Likewise, point defenses still lack the logic to identify and ignore projectiles launched by friendly ships, rendering flak launchers and limpets useless for everyone in range. Having additional weapons that are effective against Thargoid missiles and the Thargoid swarm would also be greatly appreciated, even if they aren't as effective as the flak launcher itself. The role of fleet carriers in this fight is something of a black sheep in all this. Currently, Fleet carriers are not allowed to jump into Thargoid-controlled or Thargoid-invaded systems. As the war progresses, and especially if the war begins to be lost in earnest, these ships are going to have fewer and fewer places to park, likely leading to congestion that will force them out of the bubble over time. Perhaps this is intended, but regardless, it would be better if commanders could choose to risk their carriers falling under attack and potentially being destroyed should they remain in or enter a system under threat. The final ingredient missing, but likely planned, is the Thargoid War's endgame. We still don't know what the victory conditions are for humanity, and what paths there are to these victories. It has been said in the past that our interactions with the Thargoids would inform their disposition to us. The implication here is that there was a peaceful way to engage with the aliens at one point, and there may well still be. The current implied victory condition is to attack and destroy, or drive off, Thargoid maelstroms, though we lack currently any mechanic to do either. I'm left to wonder if the communication plot thread won't be picked up again at some point, as an option that could be executed to at least partially advance a victory condition in the Second Thargoid War. We know definitively that the Thargoid victory condition is the destruction of all human systems, and that the war will spread across the bubble until it is accomplished. It's likely that the other Thargoid maelstroms are capable of relocating if needed, and that once certain thresholds in the bubble are met, these mobile command structures will depart for other pockets of civilization, like the Witch Head, California Nebula, and Colonia. There are a ton of excellent possibilities for future story and feature development over the coming months, and it appears to be reviving interest in a game that has been fading up to this point. Here's hoping the momentum can be sustained and that the cautious optimism I feel is not disappointed. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.